Okay, uh, hi again. Um, I got cut off last time yesterday, and um, I was still talking about listening. And today I'm going to briefly talk about listening as well as speaking and a few other things. Um, sorry about yesterday getting cut off. Um, but I think I was about to talk about listening to the radio. Um, you know, you can turn the radio on if it's available in the language that you want to learn. Um, also, watching TV and listening to people, you know, really speaking to each other. And I remember yesterday, um, I said if you hear two people talking, two natives talking to each other in um, a foreign language, then uh, you can listen to them. Because when you're learning a foreign language, you're, uh, you're going to, or when someone speaks to you, they're going to speak differently to you than uh, until you're at that point where you can speak where you can understand everything because they're going to speak with you with, you know, smaller words, um, no slang really, um, etc. until you get used to it. Um, so yeah, just listening and watching television, anything to do with listening is very important. Um, also I think the next part is speaking and speaking is obviously, it's the last part I mentioned in the last video about uh, reading, writing, and listening, as well in this, is, it, is in this video about listening. And this one I wanted to talk about speaking. And um, speaking is obviously very important with learning a language um, and overcoming plateaus um, helps you with the language in many aspects. Um, first of all, the goal, and like, at least for me, is communication when I speak. Um, I'm, I'll make mistakes at first. Anyone makes mistakes learning a language at first, that's normal. Um, and just overcoming that obstacle of speaking and make, taking the risk of making mistakes, you improve. So you don't, I mean, you'll make the mistake again probably, um, but you know, you'll make it less and less and then eventually it's behind you. Um, also, let's see. When you speak, you can, you know, work on the accent at the same time. Because when you speak, uh, you get feedback in return, um, not just on your accent uh, by itself, but also, um, you know, if you're talking about sports or something, and you say, "Oh, I like sports," and then there, someone's gonna say something else, um, you, that's another opportunity for you to listen to the language. So speaking is very important because you get the chance to speak and you get the chance to talk about things and expand your knowledge of what you have read, what you have written, and what you have heard. Um, you just, it's, it's your time to shine, I guess, when you speak. Um, so yeah, let me see. Just practice, yeah, I've practiced to become more comfortable with the language. It's a good step. And I think that's pretty much it I talked about, um, yeah. Those are the four things. Another thing I wanted to talk about was, um, it's, uh, I don't know if there's a word for it. Um, it's when, I don't know, it's just a game that I usually play. I started this a few years ago. Um, I would, I went to a foreign country and I realized that my language was decent. Um, it wasn't really that good at the time. And, um, I would learn new words, you know, every day I would come across new words, speaking with natives, hearing them, and then reading, like, that's that's how I overcame the obstacles that I did um, when I was learning languages, or when I do learn languages. Um, in addition, um, so I, the thing I did was I got, I bought a, a little notebook, um, I mean, since then I have, I have about four notebooks now, just filled with words, and uh but, you know, I just write them down and I study them. Um, it's hard for a while, but eventually you get them kind of ingrained in your head and it uh, just becomes a part of the vocabulary. Um, you know, slang, everything, so that you're just familiar with it. Um, another thing that is very, very good, um, yeah, I, I went off on a little tangent, I'm sorry, uh, is the... It's it's kind of like a thing where you you kind of stop yourself, like if you're speaking, uh, say you're speaking to a friend in your native language, we'll just say English. You're speaking to a friend in English, 
and you say, for example, um, or you say something, and then your your friend says, um, your friend doesn't say anything, and then you say, oh, cat got your tongue, cat got your tongue. Um, that's a saying, you know. And then you would wonder to yourself, oh, um, I wonder how you say that in uh, a different language, you know. And then you look it up, and then you write it down, and then you know. You use it, and then it's kind of ingrained in your head after a while. Um, it's kind of fun just to see how sayings and things like that are different in um, other languages. Uh, just to see, you know, if you take it literal at first because of the origin of some of these sayings that, I mean, I don't really think about sayings like, you know, in my mother language, but um, it's really interesting. And uh, just the curiosity of words, not just sayings, but, you know, anything, you know. Um, oh, what is that? You know, that's a plan. Or what is this thing behind me that's um, the blinds? And um, just things like that. And then um, just, oh, I wonder what that means. Just stopping yourself sometimes and, uh, you know, just, I don't know, like, what does that mean? Or what does that mean? Um and just, you know, expanding on that, you know. Um, I've learned French with Rosetta Stone. I, I still have to go back after I study, I have to study for a test I have to take in January. I'm going to go back to Rosetta Stone. Um, but I was thinking, you know, like you could, everyone can make, who learns languages, could make their life like Rosetta Stone because you have, you know, pictures of things. But, you know, you could take it to a whole new level and just, um, you know, not just, you know, certain objects or what someone is doing, but, you know, why someone is doing something. Um, every, you know, you read a book and the first thing, for example, the house is red. Um, but then you can, you know, can, you can dig deeper. Uh, where is this house? What is the, how much does this house cost? Um, everything, like who lives in this house? What, you know, describe the people who live there, you know, are they nice? you know, personality attributes or, you know, physical attributes. That's just a tip of the iceberg right there. And you can just learn so much just by doing that over and over again, just um, seeing things and um, being like, oh, I wonder how to say that. Or, you know, if, if, you, can, if you can say something in um, your own language, then you can say it in a different language. It just take, it's just a matter of time before you get there. Um, and it's hard at first, but I mean, it just, just like your first, your mother language, it just, you know, increases, the vocabulary increases over time, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really fun, it's just a really fun game to do it, um, or, yeah, a really fun game, and, uh, yeah, I think, um, that's about it, um, yeah, just the game of curiosity, but just, Making making it like a Rosetta Stone for yourself or a teach yourself for yourself. I guess you would literally be teaching yourself without a teach yourself book, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I think that's it for my video. Um, if anything else comes to mind, I'll post it. Um, but I'm about to work out my... Um, I'm about to go work out and uh, then I'm going to come back and work out my mind with my languages. So um, I hope you all have a great uh, night. Um, it's somewhat late here, but um, you know, the time difference. So yeah, good day or good night, and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching this video. See ya.